Hello. Last week what we were talking about was we were talking about the sower who uh, sowed some seed and some seed fell in, in um, well, there was seed that fell in rocky place and the birds of the air came and ate it and uh, some seed that fell in thorny area and, and that got choked out by the cares and the lust of the world. And then finally that good seed that we want to be is, is that seed that, that fell in good ground and grew up and uh, produced some 30 fold, some 60, some 100 fold. And, and uh, we're going to kind of continue with that theme. We're in chapter 4, picking up from verse 41, uh, 21, and uh, I'll start praying. God, I pray, God, that you would bless this word. I pray that it would speak to everyone who's listening, God. I pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to those who are listening, Lord, and that they would receive what you want them to receive and grow. In Jesus' name, amen. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought and put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear, and what measure ye meet. It shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall be more given. For he that hath, to him it shall be given, and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. And I'm going to stop there and just kind of deal with that part right now so we're talking about a candlestick um and how you when you light up light a candle you don't you don't just uh you know hide it somewhere you you bring it out to give out light and as christians that that's what we're here for we're here to share light with the world we're here to be light in the world to uh go into those places that are dark and bring the light of god bring truth now one of the things about light is it exposes things. It exposes things where you see the darkness and you can expose the darkness. And another thing about light is it brings warmth. And as Christians, we're supposed to bring love into places that don't have love. And um, it's not easy being the light because when you don't like light, you want to extinguish it. And, and that's kind of another experience about being a, a child of God, that there are people and forces and powers and principalities that want to want to smother you and put you out as soon as you start to shine your light. They want to, they want to kill your joy. They want, to, they want to stop you from, from giving off the light of God and sharing Christ with the world. So that's something you kind of have to expect. Now, um, it said in verse 24, it says, Take heed what you hear and what measure you meet, it, it shall be measured back to you. And then it says in verse 25, that he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even what he hath. Now, there's a, a, a portion of scripture in Matthew that talks, uh, Matthew, let me see if I find it, Matthew 25, it talks about talents, and uh, basically there's a parable of a master who gives out talents to his servants. He gives one servant one talent, one servant two talents, and one servant five talents. And basically, the talents that, that are, they're given, they're expected to go and do something with it, and the one that has five gets gets another five, so he has ten. The one that has two gets another two, so he has four. But the one that has one, he doesn't do anything with it. He buried it. So this is saying that, you know, what you have, you know, whoever has, more will be given. So God gives us each a measure, a gift, a calling, and we all have things that we're uh, unique in, that God wants to use us in. And if we take what God has given us and we use it, God will bless us and give us more. But if we take the gifts that God has given us and we, and we don't do anything with them and we bury them, even what we have will be taken. So with the talents um, that's in Matthew, the person that, that buried their talent, they didn't use it the right way. God said, take away his talent and give it to him who has ten. So um, that, you know, th those, you know, that, both these two scriptures go together very well. You know? So if you have gifts and talents, and you do, and you use them to glorify God, God will give you more. The more you, you uh, exercise that you can handle the responsibility that God gives you, the more God will give you more responsibility. So let's move on. So verse 26, it says, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast a seed into the ground, and it should sleep, and he should sleep, and rise up day and night, and the seed should spring up and grow, and he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit from herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth forth his sickle, because cometh the harvest. So 
Um, now we're taking that seed. So we were talking about that seed that brings the 30-fold, the 60-fold, the 100-fold. Now we're saying what the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like as if that seed were planted and then it grows, right? The kingdom of heaven and it's bringing forth fruit. And when the seed is fully brought forth fruit, fruit it's reaped. You know, that's, that's, when, that's when harvests are reaped and that's when, when God is going to reap his children out of the earth. Uh, and, I, and I believe that there is a time coming where Christianity will be really followed and the Christians will wake up out of, out of the worldliness and really dedicate themselves to God. And I believe that we're entering into that time now, more than ever. So, verse 30, And he said unto, uh, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? What comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds, seeds that are in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and become greater than all the herbs, and shooteth out branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge in the shadow of it. And with many such parables he spoke to them, um, and they that were able to hear it. So we, when, we when we talk about that, a mustard seed is an herb, and, uh, but as far as herbs grow, it's, a, it, it's more like a tree, a little tree, and it, and it grows, and then it says that the fowls, in the parable, the fowls of the air, the air come and nest in it. And I really think of, you know, just basically the church and Christian life being so full and so fruitful and so evident that, you know, even the angels of God will come to be around and, and look for, for shelter inside of the church. You know, um, I don't know if that's exactly the right way, but that is how I see it. So verse 33, and it says, And many such parables spake he the word unto them, and they were all able to hear it. But without a parable he spake not unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Again, being alone with God will give you understanding. Having intimacy with Jesus, will, you'll gain understanding, you'll gain knowledge, you'll gain wisdom. See, in the world, when you talk about like secret organizations and societies that exist, what they always do is they always promise you that the more that you do, the more you'll learn. And the, and the longer you, you give them your money and you do things for them, you know, then they'll unlock more secrets and more mysteries and you'll get more power and better position. And it's always an illusion and it is all an illusion because at the end of the day, the only thing that that could ever offer you is death. They promise, a lot of these societies, they promise you light and they don't offer you light, they offer you darkness and confusion. Where Jesus is the light, and he offers his light freely, there, there is no secret to it. And the only thing you have to do is love God. If you love God, you draw near to God, God will give you more. He'll give you more responsibility, he'll give you more understanding, and he'll, he'll answer your prayers more. You'll have more of a relationship, and your faith will grow more. So there is, there is no secret with God that is not something that's open for the whole world, but you know, but it is exclusive because you have to love God in order to enter into it, if that makes sense. So verse 35, And the same day even was come, and he said unto them, Let us go and pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they, they took him as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and waves, and it beat on the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awakened him and said, Master, carest not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and said, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? It doesn't matter what you're going through and it doesn't matter what this world throws at you. If you've got God on your side, you've got nothing to worry about. As a Christian, it's not our job as a follower of God to fear anything in the world. It's actually we're told not to be afraid of the things in the world. And yeah, there are some scary storms, and it might seem like we're going to die, but when that happens, we've got to put our faith in God who is with us. Jesus was on the boat with them. He was on the boat with them. Now, he was sleeping, and they were thinking that he didn't care. 
But there was nothing to worry about because he was with them. And he rebuked the storm and it went away. And there's so many times in my life that I've had things happening that just seemed like there was no way out at all. But I trusted God, held on to him, and then he cleared the storm up. He answered the prayers. He moved things out of my way. And it was in a way that I didn't expect or understand. And that's what God wants to do for you also. Father, I pray, God, that you would bless this word. Lord, I pray that you would bless those that are hearing it. I pray that they would receive the truth, God, that you have in here to share with them, Lord, and that they would look to you to answer all of their problems, Lord. And, and I, I pray, God, that you would give them deliverance in the areas that they need deliverance. Father, I pray, God, that, that each person this week would draw closer to you, Lord, and that they would look for the, more intimacy with you, God, that they would look for more of a relationship with you. And I pray that you would open up their eyes, open up their ears, open up their hearts to receive your power and your love. In the name of Jesus, amen.